Africa, Uganda. We're close to Kampala, a modern city with 1.4 million inhabitants. It's seven o'clock at night, and the electricity has been cut. This happens several times a day, and when it happens, life grinds to a halt. It may seem romantic, but for those living here, the failing electricity supply is a huge problem. No light, no telephone, no computer, no internet, no refrigerator, no cooker. Several times a day, people are thrown back into a dark pre-industrial age. The problem is the country's poor infrastructure and its undersized power plants. Uganda's electricity plants produce only a quarter of the power actually needed for its population. The government needs to invest a massive three and a half billion US dollars in its power plants over the next 10 years. Until then, it's wood fires instead of electric kettles. Only one in 10 Ugandans has access to electricity at all. And those who have power have to pay a high price. Only recently, electricity prices went up by nearly 40%. No wonder people rely on traditional tools that don't need electricity to work. The expensive and unreliable electricity supply has a disastrous impact on the economy. Despite a young and increasingly well-educated workforce, economic growth is sluggish. Analysts say that Uganda's economy could grow by at least 6.5% a year. However, the actual growth rate is only 4.5%, mainly due to the problems with the power supply. Kampala is Uganda's buzzing capital. This is where the country's new middle class lives. Many of them have been educated in Europe and America. They demand a Western standard of living, and this includes high-speed internet, a reliable mobile phone network, and enough electricity to run their businesses and power their computers. In April 2011, a series of blackouts sparks violent demonstrations. <laughs> Newspapers and citizens alike are in uproar. They demand power, electric power. The Ugandan authorities are worried. In Tunisia, Egypt and Libya, a wave of protest has just toppled several governments. To quell the protests, the Ugandan government calls in the armed forces. The violence escalates. The streets are burning and shots are fired. In the end, 360 people are arrested, 143 are injured, and two are killed. 